speaking tonight is Tim Twelman, the uh, founder of the college program, Tom Ricardo Garza, with the College ID program. We partnered together to bring two amazing programs together to be one powerful entity. And uh, we talked about how can we get our message out to help kids and help people have an opportunity to go to school. And we came up with a college fund. So what we're going to be doing once a month doing these seminars. Uh, starting next month, we'll have guest speakers come in at the end, college coaches, maybe professional players, college players. And uh, you can come as many as you like. Uh, that's up to you. But we're trying to make it bigger and bigger every single time. So this is the first one. We appreciate you guys coming because we actually have people here that we can say it exists now. And uh, no matter how many people are here, we're still going to give you everything that you need to be successful. So. Uh, to get started, the first topic that we wanted to talk about is preparation. You know, the, the biggest thing that I feel that for all of us is to be very proactive in the process. So in order to get to where we need to be, everybody here has to be involved. Parents, kids, they all have to be involved. And parents, why is it so important that we start the process? And when did you guys start the process? To me, you started it today. Right? So if you haven't started it, today's going to be your first day. Okay, so when do you think of uh, how this process starts? Any, any answers? What do you think? Right? Dead right. Begins freshman year. Why? Because every grade counts. Okay, it's not about playing necessarily, but it's because every grade counts. And why else does the college process start so early? Because families all want a piece of that pie, right? We're all here. We all want to be here. We all want to get involved in the sport and play in college because there's scholarship money available. Okay, possible. And then why we actually want to do this? We want to play in college, but we want to get help. Okay? I mean, don't you agree? Yeah, definitely. And to go along with that, preparation is part of that element is getting ready to communicate with coaches, start getting a database together, start looking at the schools you think you might be interested in and copying their, copy their email addresses and making a little small database for yourself because that's going to be very important as you get older to go to. And uh, coaches have a lot, of, a lot of players contacting us and you can send an email and a note that you had sent that coach an email that day and you don't get anything for a couple weeks, you can go back and follow up. It works both ways. So a relationship, preparing those relationships for the college coach preparation side. So camps is another good opportunity. College camps is a great way to be into that environment at a young age. So being able to compete as a freshman or an eighth grader at a college camp, I would recommend something like that. Going to a university, seeing the campus, maybe going to a large university, uh, different divisions though. No matter which camps you do, if you do a decent one, there's going to be coaches from all different divisions there anyway, but now you've got your feet wet, and it starts the process of being who's accountable. First of all, who do you think is accountable? Is it the your college coach or your club coach, your high school counselor? Who do you think is accountable for the process? If you're going to get the opportunity to play in college, who do you think is responsible? You are. The kids are. Kids are ultimately responsible. Why? Because it's their playing, their grades that actually get them to move on. Okay, so you can't, the worst case scenario would be is to graduate from high school and not get a chance to play and start blaming other people. Okay, because it's not their fault. Okay, you are sitting here today because you want to get to where you want to go, so this is how it happens. Parents are right there as being accountable, but they're behind you because it's, the kids have to do it. Okay, I know a lot of the parents are here without their kids because they have other things going on, but the message has to get to them that this is their responsibility. Because really, but they, they're making a life decision. They're going to go to college. This isn't like picking a high school. This is picking a college that's going to affect the rest of your life. So you really have to be involved. You want to have a say in it. Okay, and it's not just about playing. Right? There's a lot more to it than just playing the sport. So who's accountable? Who is? Yes, sir. Right? Good. So you three boys in the back, who's accountable? So that's it. Right? So it's just a good message to hear because parents are 
here supporting you. They wouldn't, you wouldn't be here without your parents. So they're, they're there to help you, but you've got to just take that responsibility. If you're choosing a school solely on soccer, and something happens and you can't play soccer anymore, or a coach gets a different different job that recruited you and you're somewhere else, you're kind of left there. You know, you want to make sure you're in an environment academically where you still are going to be happy. If soccer is the only thing that makes you happy at that school, it might not be the best decision for you. That's another element of being accountable and understanding your needs as a, as a human being, not just a soccer player, okay? And really seeing the classrooms and the teachers and the professors, um, the community base around you, a lot of that. It, there's some very important decisions in your life. It's getting by in a house, getting married, and choosing a college. And it's, it's one of the top three most important things. So if you can take it serious now, and you guys are. I mean, you guys being here just at the center, you guys are already way ahead of the game, I can tell you that right now. So you're going to get a lot of education tonight. You'll be able to use that uh, going into the next step. And I really think if you think about it, it's a Parents the same way, you know, I was a parent of three kids that went on to play in school and did all that. And I just wanted to make sure I did everything possible to help. If they get the chance to play, it's great. If they don't, at least I felt good. I gave them the opportunities to do it. And that's the same way that you guys are doing for your kids. You're providing the opportunities. If they don't take it and run with it, that's their choice. But not everybody here is going to get the play. And that's okay, too. But you want to make sure, as Ricardo said, is to make sure you're picking the school based on academic piece first and let the sport follow. And there's a lot of other criteria involved, but academics first is going to give you that success. So let's take advantage of this intimate setting and we can specifically talk to you as players. What colleges are you interested in, one by one? Do you have an idea of what's the schools that you might think about going to? Yeah? No? Did you sir? I'm not sure yet. Just name, name one, what's one dream school? Thank you. 
approach is recruit. Like you recruiting them. Okay? You're recruiting them based on looking at you. College coaches are not going to be sending emails and letters to you personally without knowing if you're interested. Unless you're a, a special player. They're going to they're going to go after kids that are showing interest in them. So every time you guys go to a showcase, you know, you see the college coaches sitting on the sideline with this folder. What do you think is written in this folder? Names of kids that have shown interest in that. Okay, because most schools, the average money that they have to spend across all divisions is $1,000 a school. Okay, so what do they do with $1,000? Not much. So when they show up at a showcase, they're going to make the most out of that time. So when they, if your son or daughter wants to play for a school and you see them on the sideline, they might not be looking at your son or daughter unless you had sent them a, a personal email, not a team email, not a, it has to be personally right from your son or daughter from his email saying, I am interested in your school. So where do you think most of the opportunities fall? Division one, two, or three. In most of the schools, 94% of all opportunities to play for scholarship money is outside of Division I. 94%. Okay, so is there a lot of opportunities besides Division I? I would think so. Okay, so that's what Ricardo had mentioned earlier about being in the area. Division I, 9.9 9 scholarships for the entire squad. Division II, 9. Division III, 0. JUCO, 18. So there's a lot of different to double back on the notion about players not always being the best ones that go to college is absolutely true. The year we won a national championship, uh, when my wife and I were trying to start dating, how many players on that team weren't as quality as they are on the team this year? Yeah. Half of my squad that won a national championship would not make my team this year. So on this year, this team I have now, Jefferson Dallas, how many aren't exactly the top, top level players. Well, I put on the spot. Come on, you should know the
don't find it to be correct. So they're the ones that are left behind. Because you know, or they're picking a school that doesn't fit their academic profile, and so they're going to go on to school for more than four years. And that's not really the goal. Right? We don't want to do that. At all. So we're talking about camps real quick. Yeah, I mean, the camp part of it, I was able to see players every year, whether I had this program or other programs in the past, or if I did Indiana's camp or NIU's camp. It's a great tool for coaches because during the season, it's impossible to get out and see players, especially as a head coach. So camps is the opportunity to recruit. All the other coaches that invite the other coaches to come. I part of my mission here too was to help the coaches, not just the players. So I put I created this mentality for every coach that's a part of College of D to understand that you are my network and I am in your network. So you come and you work our camp and you help evaluate players. And instead of being at a tournament and you just see the one or two kids you like and you ignore everyone else who moves the next field. Your responsibility is to coach everyone, see everyone, and try to think of other players or other coaches that would like these players at other divisions that you've met in another team. Or someone that's in our network already that you met the month before, the year before, and we had a meal together. That's the thing we do before camp is we have a meal together as a staff. I invite, all the, I invite your club coaches, I invite your high school coaches, and we sit down and we have a meal with coaches and we just have them, and they get to learn more about you. And that's when I make the pitch to the new coaches and say, hey, you're part of this now. You have to help everybody that's a part of this. If you go back to California or West Virginia, think about everyone in this network. Don't just think about your program. And by doing that, there are 35 recruiters all across the country helping your program. And they bought into that. And that's why this program is getting so big. We went to Bolivia for the third time. This is in a nice, large stadium. And last year was the first time we did it in February. And there was about 180 players. This year there's 250. These kids look at that soccer ball as a better way of life. Their mentality is not how much scholarship am I going to get, this or that. It's, does your college have air conditioning? How are you going to do that? Do they get their own room? Do they get a bed? Those are questions that we get in our college talks. And that's a way for me to bring college coaches over there and bond in an environment that they're not used to being in. And then really understand college ID by being with me in another element, another country, and seeing what this is and bring it back home and realize we as college coaches have a great tool against scholarships. And we have uh, admission capabilities to get players in. So what we do in Bolivia is we try to get maybe one kid for each of our programs a year, if that. When they come back home, they have to work my camp because they brought us to South America. So it's a nice little relationship. These coaches would never be able to go there. Some of the coaches would never be able to come to St. Louis. Some coaches won't be able to go to Florida or California. But because I created a camp and I can pay them, I can reimburse them for them. And that's what I wanted to do. So it's, it's, I know it's new and it's, it's kind of ground floor, but I know it's going to be really big. This is what College ID is about. It's about more than just you signing up. And that's why the cost is so inexpensive. I want you to do three, four camps so you're being seen by four, eight, 12, 16 different coaches in two different months. And a lot of everyone pretty much in here done my program already. And those guys have been doing it for a couple of years. Before I even had college ID, once a year I did something down in Hillsboro, and I had a bunch of coaches come once a year. Just once a year, just for Jefferson County kids. And they evaluated. And it just grew into this. So these kids, we hope to, to help them over here and play with some of our local kids. So, you know, at Jefferson, and I recruit some local players, you're going to get experience to play with these guys. But also, we want to just help you get to where you want to be. Every player has a place. Okay? And if you didn't, I wouldn't pour so much time into this. I wouldn't be doing everything I'm doing. And I've been coaching long enough, and I've won enough championships where, believe me, I still have that competitive edge. But I have this different chapter in my life where I just really want to help you guys. So the most important piece that I feel of this seminar is going to be this. So I really want you to pay attention. Some of you guys have done my camp and heard some of the things we've already talked about. But this is the real deal. And I'm really, really honored and humbled to partner with this man right here. Because if I had that back in high school, you know, that's what every coach has been saying that I've been explaining this program. It's such a great tool. And I know my kids to come will be using that tool. So you can take this and just hit the right button. So first of all, I'll go back and introduce myself. I'm, my name is Tim Twalman. I 
son James and I founded this program a couple years ago. Prior to that, I would been working with high school student athletes. Again, we're, this is for all sports because we're talking soccer tonight. For previous years, I worked with all high school student athletes helping them through the college process. And my son James came to me and said, Dad, we're doing everything you can to tell the families, but we got to do more. And what we did more is identify 50 schools that match all your kids' needs. But we broke them down so you have to do no research whatsoever. Everything is in this report. Okay, from the email addresses, the coaches' information, everything's going to be in there for you. But more importantly, we have all the financial information as well. Academic information is in there, financial information. And what, so we're basically, what we're trying to do for all of you is to simplify this whole process for you. We want you to spend more time sitting at the kitchen table talking about the choices and not finding the schools. Because that takes too much time. And I can tell you from what our research has done, this report that you can get will save you 20 plus hours of just plain research. Okay? To me, that's very bad. consulting work for the largest recruiting company in this country, and I do not want to be a recruiting company because you promised too many things that aren't really true, okay? And it costs too much, right? It costs us high. We are 100% successful making sure that you have all the information in front of you to do, this, to, do the research, to do the search for it. If the kids don't get involved, you buy the report, which is minimal cost, you buy the report. If you don't get involved, nothing happens. You might as well not be sitting here tonight. Okay, and that's we need to know, we talked about this already, but these are very important things to remember. How many schools there are, because we all can sit here and name, you know, you can name one or two schools you might be interested in, which is very cool, but those two schools don't fit your academic needs, financial needs, and don't think you're a good player. Does that mean you can't play? No. You could contact 10, 15 schools and still get that same reaction. But you need to really broaden your search so you can have a good opportunity to know where you stand. All divisions. Talked about Division One and Two having plenty of money. Junior College Division Three still has grant money. Okay, so you don't want to look at them as like I can't go there. You have to hear them out. Okay, you have to listen to what they have to say before you just say I'm not going. Okay, so you have to make sure. This is a college game report that we actually produce. Okay, and I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about it so you understand it because it's very simple. You will go. You will go to our website. This is a profile that you'll get back. This is all the information that you were talking about a second ago. What kind of school you want? You're talking about, you know, we have the, we have the regions. You got four-year, two-year school. Um, you have the size of the school. You got what division fits you personally. And then you have this piece here, which is really important. It's hard to read right here, but every sport out there, the NCAA gives you an every scholarship amount that. Averages across all divisions. So for boys, high school soccer, the average scholarship amount is 39%. Okay? For girls, it's 43%, I believe it is. 43%. So here's the key. It's 39%, 43%, but of what? Okay? If it's 39% of a Notre Dame, the family is still responsible for a huge chunk of money. Okay? So we're trying to make sure that we understand. We want kids, and we call it, that there for a second, but we call it lift from the end. We want you to be graduated from college, looking back at those four years and say that was a great decision. Not, I wish I would have known. Okay, because that's where this college game report was born. James graduates from Stanford. His buddies were standing next to him that played soccer with him but didn't have the scholarship monies. And they said, I wish I would have known because they owe a huge amount of money Start, I don't care where you go to school, you're still starting the workforce in the same place as everybody else. Okay, you still got to prove yourself, so you're behind the eight ball. We had a young girl go through our program, went to Loyola to play, got very little scholarship money, but she wanted to go there and she wanted to become a teacher, which is fine. She owes $90,000 into the teacher, so she's going to have a heck of a time getting herself out of there. And the reason I, I say that is, I'm going to skip right through here. The reason I say that is because when you live from the end, there's a rule that we all need to follow that nobody talks about. 
okay? There's a one-to-one -one ratio that we all need to be in tune to. One-to-one -one ratio, meaning whatever you want to be in school, there's an average salary, that, it's an expected average salary that you're going to serve. So if the teacher's coming out of school, she's going to be averaging, just say, for instance, 35,000. So the one-to-one -one ratio means you should borrow no more than your expected first-year salary. Then, then you can live. Otherwise, you're going to be living at home. And that's really, we all know, I, I subscribe to all the Google alerts on student debt, and it's very scary. So we're trying to just change it. We're trying to change the process so people think differently about wonder what schools are picking. Okay, so back up a little bit here. Okay, so you just filled out your profile. You're going to get all this information, okay, right to you. We break it down for you. This is the total cost page. And it's hard to read, but let me tell you why we give you 50 schools. Vanderbilt comes out to be about $230,000 for four years. And the reason we did this, the University of Tennessee down here, is that the four-year cost is $50,000. And the reason we tell you this is because you're getting everything that you ask for in the profile, you're getting it from all these schools. So you can pay that amount, or you can, we don't really care. I don't care. Right? But I tell you one thing, I want the family to think through that because if you wait through the last minute when your son or daughter is a senior, you're going to be picking drastically and just take loans out and it puts you in a bad position. So we just want to show you there's plenty of options. Where you fall, that's, we don't ask, we don't, that's your business. Okay? But we just want to make sure you understand. We, take, we want to make sure you understand that the average four-year salary for a sport, we apply it to every school so you can see it. So if it's 43%, we apply it so you can see still what the real family contribution is called. We call it real family contribution because somehow it has to get paid. Okay, now is that all the money you can get? No. There's plenty of academic money that we can't project. But that depends on each school when you get there. You, know, you have to apply for it at each school. Okay. Here's my our list on the end. Because this is where we really, this thing was started from, and it's so important. If we can think four years ahead and know that we made the best decision, that's going to be a good decision that you're going to make from the beginning. So here's, here's why we, how we do it. We give you a bunch of different majors to pick from. Is it every major around? No, but there's enough in here that you can pick from. If you're not sure what you want to be, the undecided, every salary is 43000 That's all those, that's the average of all those what we don't do. We don't show you any salaries because every child wants to be a chemical engineer. Right? And that doesn't work. So we take the salaries out. You guys, we want you to go to school for what you belong, but fit your desires. So we want to make sure you get the right uh, major before we apply. Okay? So our, our call to action, basically, is we want to make sure you're doing this. We need, to, we need to have the report in your hand. You need to discuss it with your family. You need to contact the right schools because all of this is about contacting the right schools. You're being identified and evaluated by Ricardo's program. Then it, what's important is you start calling and identifying the right schools that fit your needs. And your needs are not just about the sport. It has to be academics first and then all the other criteria. As Ricardo said, the sport can end the first day you're in practice in college if you got injured. Right? So you want to make sure the schools fall apart. These are the services. We, I gave it to you on a yellow sheet of paper, so I don't really need to go through it. But we help you through the whole process. We talk about the mock interview training, which people are like, what is it? Every coach is going to recruit a mature student athlete. I guarantee you, if they're not mature student athletes, they don't want them. All right, because he, they do not want to have to babysit the kids. So it's important that when you meet a coach, you can stand up and talk to them, and you interview the coach. If I'm going to play for Carlo, I want to know about his program. Now, I'm going to go play for two years with him. I've got to know exactly what I'm getting myself into. So I'm going to ask the right questions, and that's going to be helpful. Okay, so this is what we're doing for players like yourselves and other players across the, you know, the state. We work nationally, but we really want you to consider making sure you do something similar to this so you don't have to do all the research because it takes up way too much time, okay, and it's very important. If you have any questions whatsoever, we're going to jump right into the questions and the answers right now anyway. So you can ask me or Ricardo anything you want. Can uh, 
enough, can a prospective student athlete call a coach at any time, or are there only yeah. a certain it's window? Can, can call a coach any time. Coaches can't call students because of a certain age, you know, the grade. But yes, and okay. emails is really the best. But like Ricardo said, if he picks up the phone, he can talk to your son. Okay, but if he doesn't pick it up and you leave a message, he can't call you back. That's crazy. But you can respond to emails. If yeah. You to Email. Uh, we can respond to that. Certain divisions can do other things. And my division can do whatever. Division one, division two, they different rules. So the big thing to remember is, you, if you get 50 schools, here, here's what happens. They, the kids still go through there and pick up. Oh, I don't like that school. Then, then, wrong way of doing it. You contact all 50 schools.
how we film those games pretty bad. It's on the app, so that on your app, so you just simply share that video to any coach you want, instantly, on their social media, wherever you test to be. In, in Bolivia, with Polar Stock and head coach, he had worked the last camp, and he was asking about players, and I had to talk to him, you know, what did you think? And he went back and watched the game videos, and then sent me an email, I like number of 7, 14, 13, yellow, like, it works. Most coaches will definitely use that to see at least block. Right. And, or yeah. if that coach ball is a system ball. And it is a first impression, right? They're still, yeah. still going to do research and call your club coach or high school coach to find out really what kind of person you are, right? They're not, again, they're going to recruit. I mean, like Noah McCarver is not going to want to bring a player in that knows, knows his trouble when the beer is in the this is too hard. So everything that you're doing, you know, your relationships with your club coach, your high school coach, High school counselor has to be clean. Okay, so if you have an issue, you got to clean. Right, what, is, what is a video like that you're supposed to actually link? I mean, well, like, like the, no, I mean really like, post of them three or four minutes. You know, you don't want to give them a whole game and then they have to try to well, find right. them. But I mean, different snippets of different games well, or just one. Well, highlight your your daughter as right. a, your daughter's ability. So if she's a she's really fast and can, has good. Ball school, whatever, you got to show it. You know, you don't want to just have her in the background somewhere. you got to see that. You know, if she's an outside back attacking, you know, show it. You know, if the goalkeeper, it's much easier, right? You can do some training and do it. It's easier. And it's not easy all the time on a, you know, on field players, but, but it's important. The video comes into play based on the regions you're choosing. If you're in the Midwest, you want to go to the East Coast or West Coast, the more video, the better for that coach to be enticed to come to see you play. He's a local person. Highlight videos enough for him to then jump in his car and go watch your son play. <coughs> so the further away, you need more data, more media that you can send out. And it's so it's so important. Even if you don't have video now, and you've started sending your email and profile, you can, as soon as you get the video, you just resend everything out. The more you contact the coaches, the better off you. So whatever your son or daughter's email address is, it should be first name, last name, and graduation and at gmail.com. You don't want to have like you know, Leslie Junior, and, you know, because you, you want your you want your son or daughter's name to always be appearing in their inbox, and they continually see it. They're like, who is this? Thing? You know, they're gonna check it out. Okay, so it's important, but that that should be nice and clean. The email should should it come from? Yeah. Yeah, if it comes from parents, it's deleted. Right. In my opinion, the databases, the robots that send us emails about those profile sites. Parents sends an email. I might go through a nice, you know, she or he's really trying, okay, give that many stripes. But generally, if the kids doesn't have it, it comes falls back on maturity. You know, so if he still needs mom and dad to send stuff and do stuff for him. It's not a kid that is going to live and I'm going to be responsible for them. But I, and again, the mom and dad are going to help, yeah. you know, help them get the thing moving. Yeah. You know, but it's got to come from that. And that's why, like, 50 schools you get from us, you know, you get an ebook version, so all those are live emails. You just click on it and you're ready to go. So there's no research or none. You can just do it so much quicker. Okay, but it's, it is important that you send them. And always attach. So every time you reply to a coach, you should attach your profile and video again, because you never know if they actually looked at it the first time. Don't take anything for granted. The coaches don't care how many times you tie up. They really don't. They do care. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good.
having sponsors to keep this afloat. I've taken it to another level. I've met this gentleman in the back, Morris Wisdom, who they create these apps, amazing apps. And I was playing around with the app and checking it out and learning some functionalities from it. And as Allison and Andrew come around, they're going to be stamping these loyalty cards. Every time you visit a sponsor that supports College ID, you want to get a stamp. They know the codes. We have sponsors on here like Jersey Mike's, like East Coast Pizza, uh, Twin City Toyota, you get your oil change. We have Sam's Club. We have many different places. And they're sponsoring to keep this program amazing for you guys. And they give a discount. They give a discount for you to go in a place that you're normally going to eat anyway with your family. And on top of that, we have a loyalty card. After you fill all those loyalty cards that everybody is pulling up right now, look like that, there's 10 stamps there. After you've got all 10 stamps stamped, you get a $75 voucher to do towards your next college ID event. So it's a way to get free camp opportunities. It's a way to save some money. And we took it one step further. On your app, in the very, very bottom right corner, it says CIDP Sponsor Program. If you don't mind, just click that tab and open it up. We're going to watch this video. This is one of our sponsors. He's going to explain as a business why he wants to support this, this way of marketing. I basically blended a, a donation slash sponsorship into an actual business marketing program. The, uh, the very bottom, of you open up the app, uh, CIDP sponsor program, it says win. The app itself, you can register. All of our camp videos are there. So click on the camp videos. Whoever did camp last time, all the videos are there for you to be able to share. Alerts. We send alerts. We notify you through the app. Uh, pictures, social media. We have a map of where all our sponsors are. So if you're in the area, you want to get a good value, have a meal or whatever, you go there, you get a stamp, they're that much closer. So let's watch this really quick and uh, you can explain. Hi, my name is Josh Mathis. I'm a co-owner of East Coast Pizza here in Chesterfield Valley. We're a quick serve pizza restaurant, uh, casual dining, with a little bit of a twist. One of the reasons why I want to talk to you today is about uh, crossover media and their opportunity in marketing and why we chose that as one of our main forms of marketing. One of the main reasons why we went with crossover media versus a traditional like, mass mailer or that type of advertising, door hangers, magazines, even, even uh, commercial and things like that. Is just, this allows you to get the information in the hands of people that actually have already said they want this information and draw them in. It also allows them to receive something from doing this by, uh, you know, earning bonus points, uh, able to be very good to then turn their, their uh, meal time visit, which they would go anywhere area anyways into a benefit for them as well. So it's a very powerful way to draw people in that are already saying yes we want this information. This is how you use it when you actually go into a restaurant to use one of our sponsors. This is literally how you do it. You'll see here, check out their deal. East Coast Pizza in Chesterfield Valley takes 50% off your order. You simply click you want to redeem it and you hand it to the cashier. The cashier is going to enter the code. Now, as soon as that happens, we track that. We know that they had foot traffic that day. So we monitor this for the business to, to see, hey, you don't have that much business, let's put another promotion out there. Let's put let's put you on another another app, another network. We're doing this for our so Casey and I Club. And we do offer uh, primarily. We're doing this for JC United Soccer Club, we're doing it for AC Portia, we're doing it for ISA. We're doing it for churches, we're doing it for high schools, we're trying to get this into our college programs, and it starts with College ID. College ID program, when you click on that sponsor program, it says interest profile. And when you open that up, that means you're interested to get some type of 
a credit to do college ID, to do the college program for virtually nothing. If you just simply complete a, a quick survey of the top three places you eat, you shop, you go as a family and you click submit, and we have that data. When you go back out and hit the back button twice, there's another tab that says send a referral. Submit referrals. When you go to any place you normally shop, one of those nine places that you put in there, you will be able to play the video, which is right here on the app, under Easy to Redeem Meals, East Coast Pizza. It will play that video. You literally just hand that to the manager while you're sitting there having a meal, asking for another water. They come over and you say, "Will you watch this? This is a way for you to sponsor my son or daughter to be able to do this amazing college program." And I just want you to watch this. If you're interested, let me know. They watch the video. They say yes. So you go back to that form, and you only do is simply put in three lines, your child's name, the business name, and their contact info, you click submit, and you're done. We get that data, we send our team over there to talk to that business, we show them where they rank inside our organization, and uh, now that you have an opportunity to market to them, now they have an opportunity to offer a discount or a coupon for you to shop in their restaurant or their establishment. You guys get discounts no matter whether you do the program or not, every time you go somewhere you use the app. Every time you get the stamp, it's one step closer to getting a, a voucher. But when we acquire, acquire the business, it's almost three to four hundred dollars credit to you, the family. It's a 50 50 fundraiser. So, as you know, that my college program to do everything for the entire year is somewhere around 425, maybe 430. Tim's program, starting out here at the Game Report, 90 bucks. 99. 99. Okay. So, right there, you're getting 90% immediately. You get an email from college that says, hey, congrats, thanks for, that. thanks for that lead. That money is going to help our program so that we can keep our costs down. But then we also relay that credit to you guys and say, here's your, here's your promo. Start signing up for our event. Sign up for the game report. You're going to pay about 10% of the total cost because you gave us a referral. So, it's a new way of marketing that I created to try to keep this going even bigger, but also to keep helping other people. Like I said, we do it for my club, we do it for high schools and churches. You can bring this to your clubs and do the same thing. Morris will make an app, we sign a contract that we're going to work together, we're going to fundraise for your school or church or club team. Then Morris will build an app for you with all the same functionalities of college ID. That organization, those parents, the same thing that you do for college ID go out. And our team goes and we fundraise for your club. Because you're attached to College ID, you also get a College ID credit on top of that. So if you get a $400 voucher to your, you know, Nimrod Soccer Club, for example, you're still going to get another voucher for credit from College ID on top of that. So now there's what I was talking about, but hopefully you can try to change the game and make sports affordable. Maybe you're only paying 15 to 20% of the average club cost, which we all know is ridiculous. And now you're doing an amazing program you can do everything for a very small fee. And now that money you're saving as a family, you can now use that and send your kid to go to those visits, send the kids to do those college camps. And now the total formula works. And we don't have to go out and try to get kids to sign up for our camp anymore. Because it's we're growing this with your clubs and your schools and you're a soccer player and it somehow it finds you. College Union always gives soccer players these vouchers. Because college Union is always the hub of all of this. So if you want to bring that back to your club, you do it. And you contact me, and Morris and I will, will build an app for you, and Tim will allow those vouchers to trickle into his program, and you can do everything that we talked about tonight for virtually nothing. Or, if you don't want to do that, that's why we made it affordable. Still. But that is the end of our presentation, unless there's any other Q&A here at the last minute. Um, be happy to answer anything else you might have, whether it's about the app, whether it's about college ID or game report. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you very much. We didn't have to talk to ourselves tonight. <laughs> and this is great for us to kind of get this launched. So appreciate everybody for being here. I got a, I got a sample of the record here too if anybody wants to see it before you take off. <laughs>